Okay, so that's a brief introduction to airframe structures. Now, let's look at engine structures. And this is from MIT OpenCourseWare for 16.50, question 32. So, the critical structural consideration for engines are disk stresses, and these are dominated by centrifugal stresses. And basically a disc is one of the, ro is the rotating structural members that carry the rotor blades in a turbo machine. So whether that's a compressor or a fan or a turbine. And these discs, um, have a large mass, which is a, a, a significant portion of the total engine mass. Often these are what sets a limit on the blade rotational speed. And really these disc stresses can go govern the, the limitations on performance in some modern aircraft engines. So to try to get an idea of what is going on here, let's start by drawing a center line. And first, let's look at a axial view. So here's a bit of outer casing of our engine. The disc may start here. Inside here is a shaft. The disc will be wide at the base. We'll then taper and then have a rim on which is mounted a blade. So this is the disc we're talking about, which has a hub, a rim, and a main central portion, and this is a blade. So just to get some terminology out of the way, this is our I, the inner radius. This is our H, the hub radius. This is our T, the tip radius. The width of this rim is W naught. The width of the base is WI. The width of the base of this tapering section is ZI. The width at some arbitrary height is Z. And the width at the top is at H. There's also the thickness of this tapering section, or the height of it, I should say, which is T sub, say, E. Okay, now if we look at this from the front, what we'll see is the following. There's the uh, inner portion, this. There's the tapering portion. Here's the uh, rim of the disc, and to that is attached a blade. So this is the rim. And if we consider the stress on a small element, in the tapering section, 
of the disk, the main part of the disk. This is developed in detail in the notes, but here I'll just do it quickly. That's plus PZ. DR, DR, R plus DR. P theta coming out here is sigma z dr with a downward component sigma z dr p theta over two. It's the same on this side, and there's a downward stress sigma. Theta. And from this, if we want to figure out what the net outwards force is due to the rotation, the net outward force, working this through, becomes sigma r dz dr dr d theta. Now to minimize the mass, we want to keep the stress sigma constant throughout the height of this part. So that means that rho z omega squared r squared d theta dr should equal negative sigma r dz dr dr d theta. Basically we want the stresses to be the same everywhere, so those cancel out. And we're left with 1 over z dz equals negative rho omega squared r over sigma. And if we integrate that, we can get the distribution of the thickness z, which is some constant c, times the exponential of negative rho omega squared r squared over 2 sigma call that equation one. So this is the thickness distribution in the rim, or sorry, in the disk. Now let's consider the stress in the disk rim. So in the rim, there's a downward stress sigma Z H R H D theta. This direction we have sigma P not P not going up we have sigma B A B which is the blade area B over two pi D theta. So here B is the number of blades. Sigma B is the blade stress. And we're assuming uniform blade loading around the circumference. So we can write all this out and this is done in the notes um, but the result is that the stress in the disk is rho not omega squared r h squared plus b over 2 pi Sigma B H A B divided by W naught T naught all over one plus Z H R H over W naught T naught. And essentially call that equation two. Essentially this component is the disk stress contribution to the rim stress. So because this is uh, positive and is in the denominator, basically uh, the disk reduces the rim stress. You can see as this term becomes larger, sigma decreases. So 
So there's also the inner rim, which supports the disk, as was shown before. And we can write a similar equation for that. And if we do that, which is developed in the notes, we get rho omega squared r i squared over 1 minus z i r i over w i t i, which is equation 3. Now here we can see that the disk adds to the uh, inner rim stress. Next for the blades, The full blade mass is supported by the stress at the root. So, sigma bh is rho blade omega squared over the area blade at the hub, integrating from the hub radius to the tip radius of AB of R dr. Call that equation 4. So, therefore, to design a disk, we can use these equations along with some other knowledge to come up with how we want to design the blades. So, to design a disk, from aerodynamics of the turbo machinery, choose Omega R hub, sorry, R tip, the hub to tip ratio, the number of blades, the blade area is a function of radius, and the width of the, of the disc rim, which is basically the cord plus a little bit, are you not? Then set the allowable stress in the disc and stress at the blade hub. Here it's important to check equation four. For the blade hub stress, as this can limit. Omega RT. So this may set, you just may limit your rotational speed. Next you choose T naught, and if you recall, we go back. Let's see if it's on this set. No, so it's on this set. Good. Uh, so it's T naught. T naught is height. Choose T naught uh, and compute the thickness at the hub from equation two. Then, step four, once again you choose Ri, the inner rim radius. This is maybe depending on uh, characteristics of your shaft. And compute Zi from equation one. And then finally, compute W, I, T, I from equation 3. I know this is a little confusing and this is uh, a lot of steps with a lot of variables. This outlines the process. In class, we'll do examples interactively to give you a feel for how 
this works out in practice.